What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American, back in with a new video. And today, it is time that we discuss the ever-growing circus that is the 2024 Republican primary. Guys, the circus continues to grow. As not only is Ron DeSantis probably announcing next week, Tim Scott is also likely to announce. Now we have former Vice President Mike Pence looking towards a 2024 run. Now, to be clear, we still don't know 100% if he's going to run or not, but it seems like he is probably going to run for the presidency in 2024. Just, <laughs> you got to be kidding me right now. I mean, this isn't as egregious as like Chris Christie or the governor from North Dakota, but this is still just absurd. Now, before we continue with today's video, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the Twitter accounts in the description down below, guys. Go follow Real American Politics on Twitter. It is a great Twitter account that I recommend you follow. Of course, follow the Rumble page for exclusive content. Great channel. I recommend that you follow that. And, of course, join the channel today. Guys, just for $3 a month, you could join Real American, which is a phenomenal deal. And to help support the daily content we all know and love. You love the daily content? Well, this is the best way to support it. So I hope and recommend you join the channel today. All right, everybody. So Mike Pence is expected to run in 2024. I, I just, I cannot get over some of these people. Now, to be clear, before I would say January of 2021, it was very likely that Pence was actually probably going to be the front runner for 2024 if Trump decided not to run. I mean, you look here, Mike Pence, before the election, he was polling at around 30, 26% nationally. And most people thought, including myself, he was going to probably be the nominee after President Trump. Well, let's just say he took a nosedive in the polls and Ron DeSantis rose after. Now, there's many reasons why this happened. Again, Pence was an okay vice president. I mean, he was good on some social issues, but his economic stances are just a disaster. But he did not handle the January 6th stuff at good at all. I mean, he lied to a lot of people. Like, if he would have said up front he wasn't going to send it back to the states or whatever, which, again, that's part of what happened. But, you know, Pence, he could have prevented a lot of crap that happened. He just hid it from everybody. And it didn't end too well. Now, that's part of the reason, like I said, there's some issues like on economics. He isn't the best on. He really isn't. But, you know, he is good on social issues. But now, to challenge Trump and DeSantis? You know, DeSantis himself, he's dumb for trying to run when he's down by, like, 40 points in most polls. But Pence? He's pulling closer to Nikki Haley than he is to Ron DeSantis. I I don't get it. I really do not get why former Vice President Pence is really going to run. Former Vice President Mike Pence is expected to soon declare a long-shot campaign for the White House against the president under whom he served. Pitch himself as a classical conservative who would return the Republican Party to its pre-Trump roots, according to people close to Mike Pence. That's stupid. That is absolutely dumb. You know, this is the issue with Mike Pence. He's good on social issues. Don't get me wrong. He's based on abortion. He understands life begins at conception, all that stuff. But look at the Republican Party before Trump. Outside of like low turnout elections like 2012 or 2014 and 2010 where it was like 20% turnout. Republicans had had a single serious win since 2004 when you accounted for the turnout. And in 2000, we arguably won because of lower turnout. So you could keep going on and on. Guys, the old ways are gone. 
if you try to revert now, it's going to end in a disaster. Because guess what? While part of the reasons what's happening in Georgia, Texas, not really Texas, but Georgia, Arizona, yes, some of these suburban voters are slightly shifting Democrat. The problem, also on top of that though, is these areas are not the same. Look at Northern Virginia. The demographics are completely different than it was when Bush won in 2004. Completely. You're not going to get these Bush margins. At best, in most cases, you may, may get Trump 2016 margins in some of these areas. May, at a federal level. Outside of that, you're not returning to the old ways. That's just going to cause an electoral disaster for the Republican Party. Mr. Pence is working to carve out space in the Republican primary fueled by appealing evangelicals, adopting a hardline position in support of a federal abortion ban, promoting free trade, and pushing back against Republican efforts to place big business on ideological grounds. He faces significant challenges, trails far behind the polls, and has made no effort to channel the populist energies overtaking the Republican Party. And I thought DeSantis' people were dumb. Like, the yeah, federal abortion ban, that's good. You know, I think flat out, for now, the federal should the federal government should have some kind of late-term abortion ban. You know, because, let's be real, until we get our messaging correct, that's the best way we can hit Democrats on. The fact that they want post-birth abortion. But the rest of this, what? Promoting free trade? That is a disaster. How do you expect to win Wisconsin? Oh my gosh, the independents. Guess what? The independents in Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, even Ohio, they're not the same independents as Georgia, as Arizona, as parts of South Carolina, North Carolina, etc. They're not. These are completely two different type of independents. This free trade nonsense would destroy us in the Midwest. And guess what? May boost us by two points in Georgia. Congratulations. But guess what? Even if you win Georgia, even if you win Arizona, even if you win North Carolina, which it's likely, you still need a Midwestern state. You're not going to get that by promoting free trade. That's why Trump won in 2016 in large part. Trade. Also, the going against the shilling for big business? Like, what? What world are you living in? The vast majority of even Republicans now, they support antitrust laws. They support, you know, stopping these big enterprises from pushing this woke political nonsense. I don't get it. I really do not get what Team Pence is doing. At least with DeSantis, they're going to focus on... He has been a good, you know, cultural warrior to a lesser extent. And he has been decent at going against Disney. Outside of that, this is stupid. This is absolutely stupid. In a sign, this campaign will be announced in the coming weeks. A pro pen super PAC called Committed to America is being set up. A veteran Republican operative, Scott Reed, who ran Bob Dole's 96 campaign and was a longtime po top political strategist for the Chamber of Commerce, will lead the group alongside Jem Hernsling, a close friend of Mr. Pence who served with him in Congress. So you're getting a guy that was a top guy for the Chamber of Commerce and ran Bob Dole's campaign. I like Bob Dole. I mean, but that's a completely different era. And you're at the Chamber of Commerce? Like, this isn't the, you know, you know, gr the growth groups. This isn't your traditional growth groups that, you know, yes, they support lower taxes, but they also support better education, all that stuff. This is a crappy globalist group that want mass immigration. And sure, they may want lower taxes, but they want unfettered, unrestricted immigration. They want free trade, a globalist group. That's a disaster waiting for Pence if he's, if he's aligning with them. Not even Nikki Haley has gone that far just yet. Mr. Pence finds himself in a highly unusual position of being a former vice president trying to squeeze back into the national conversation. 
The pro political profile he built under former tr President Trump was more supplicant than standard bearer, at least until the rupture in their relationship on January 6th of 21. He would begin far behind Mr. Trump and Governor Ron DeSantis in early national and state polls of 2024 Republican primary voters. Again, the stuff that happened on January 6th, that killed his career. It really did. It was the final thing that kind of set in stone he isn't going to be president. Which kind of sucks because he was an okay vice president. He was an okay alternative after Trump on certain issues. But he's not even running on, you know, he's running on the most crap you could possibly run as a Republican. Free trade and, you know, being against antitrust laws. It's just a total joke. And his evangelical background is the only thing that may save him in Iowa. The only thing that may crack him 10% of the vote there. Outside of that, this is a failure waiting to happen. Which is, I just don't get it. I don't get what some of these people are trying to do. If this was early 21, Pence had a serious argument. It's not. Every poll has him in single digits. When was the last time Pence pulled that 10% nationally? Let's look. Let's just look. Right here. November of 2022. And that was 11%. Let's find 15%. When was the last time Mike Pence pulled that 15%? Right here. January of 2021. Against former Trump. President Trump. January of 2021, he had his opportunity and he blew it. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the Twitter accounts in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Thank you so much. Godspeed to all of you.